it. Um, okay. Just trying to have a quick flash of what hits me, and I just I do know that I'm, I used to stare at Kiss Alive 2 a lot. Probably Kiss Alive 2, initially. Kiss Alive 2. Like all the pictures in there, like that's some crazy photos of Kiss, and and they just looked monstrous with their killer production. And Kiss was definitely the reason that we formed a band and learned how to play, like collectively with the original lineup of the band. We did not know how to play instruments. We just saw and heard Kiss, and then we like started emulating Kiss and like literally dressing up as Kiss and putting on concerts for our parents at like family functions and not even really playing. I heard a crowd, you know, live, and it was just, you know, I, I already had other Kiss records, but that's the one where I heard a crowd. And I thought, huh, very curious. You know, it sparked my curiosity, and I love the photos, and them, you know, with the fire behind them, all that, the blood, and I thought, wow, this must be amazing, and just someday it'd be neat to stand on stage. And that was very fortunate enough to get to see them a few years after that, it was 1979, I saw him at the Cow Palace here in San Francisco. We saw a KISS concert, then that's what really made us need to learn how to play, how to play instruments so we could do it for real. So, I mean, probably KISS Alive 2 was the first thing that sparked the idea of, of doing that. Me, Rob, and two of the other original members, Andy and Dennis, were fortunate enough to get to go. I was 10, I think Rob was like 10 or 11, um, Andy was 7. And um, Dennis was right, probably 11 as well. So, but um, Rob's mom and Dennis's mom brought us, and you know, I, that's that's probably more significant than the record that made me want to do it. You know, it was just kind of Kiss was almost like superheroes as far as when you heard it on record, like wow, that looks neat, that looks neat. It was probably when we walked in, and maybe four minutes into the first song. It was me watching them live. It was still more, more the live. That's when I was like, that is what I want to be when I grow up. That. But I decided that before I even heard, before I even put the needle on the record. I just looked at it and I said, yeah, that's what I want to do. <laughs> and then, you know, lucky for me, it was a kick ass album too. I was like, yeah, this sounds cool. But uh, I would say Kiss Alive 2 and Aerosmith Rock. So those two albums, I was like, yeah, this, this is what I want to do. It probably was, yeah, I'd just say it was probably around that time where I got in my head to start to play. I, st I first started learning how to play drums, actually. I wasn't, I was, I was trying to be Gene Simmons with a face. I liked his look, but I was Gene Simmons playing, playing drums. <laughs> so and I had this drum set, but then it was loud as drums will be, and I just couldn't keep playing drums so because it was just too loud at night and everything so then I switched to guitar so I could play something for more hours like late at night and stuff but um probably Kiss Alive too. It would be the show more than the record that grabbed me and then probably after that it would be you know Sabbath, Bloody Sabbath was the record once I had knowledge of music that I was like I don't want to sound like that guy but I don't. <laughs> If, I have to be like totally honest, the band that pushed me from being a spectator to being a musician was Metallica. I think that's probably one thing that most people from an older generation have in common is that you can't deny it that Metallica brought metal to a critical mass, you know. Uh, I can't really specifically say what album it was, you know, I, I do, <laughs> I can tell a story about my mother, <laughs> in which uh, I went to, at the time I think we had warehouses, they were still around, maybe it was a blockbuster, but I went and got a rap album. I think at the time it was Kid Frost, who nobody even knows of anymore. And I remember I got it and I brought it to my mom. She's like, what'd you get? I was like, oh, I got a Kid Frost album. She's like, oh God, that's terrible. I was like, well, I wanted to get the Metallica album, but it was two more dollars than I had. She's like, let's go return your Kid Frost album. I'll pay the extra money to get the Metallica album. So thanks, mom. <laughs> Probably it would be Metallica's Kill em All for the fact that around that time, you know, there was bands like, you know, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, which they were so huge, you know, playing arenas, it seemed like, impossible to be with, you know, like, yeah, that's, a, to me, that can't, can't do that. Look how big they are, they're huge. They're almost like, uh, you know, superheroes like Kiss, you know? The, but when I heard Metallica and Kill em All, they, these guys just look just like we are, guys from the street just hanging out. They had no famous costumes or whatnot. 
the music was intense and it just made me go, you know what? If they could do it, I could do it. <laughs> they look like regular dudes like me. They don't have these, you know, no props, no nothing. Looks like dudes from the streets. They look bad as fuck. And when I heard that album, I was like, okay, I think this is where uh, I'm headed.